Colleagues, we, um, we now move on. Um, the next item on our agenda is a current affairs debate on new forms of uh, citizen activism and uh, urban violence. Um, in the past months, we have, of course, witnessed citizen protests and demonstrations in uh, places like uh, Puerto de Sol, Lisbon, uh, Paris, Athens, also uh, violence and looting in, uh, in, in, in the United Kingdom. Only last weekend, uh, demonstrations around uh, half the globe reminded us once again of the growing protest among citizens, high levels of uh, unemployment, increasing feeling of exclusion, austerity measures and corruption are some of the reasons cited for this civic unrest. But, but that's not the whole story. Um, the choice of the title for this debate reflects the current situation and trends that we are witnessing in our local communities uh, today. Communities that are becoming increasingly multi-ethnic, multicultural and multilingual. On the one hand, we're witnessing unprecedented uh, citizen activism channeled through civil society, organisations and social networks, giving rise to open debate on or practically any issue at all, uh, and offering great opportunities for increased citizen participation in the processes of society. This trend leads to more interaction between citizens and authorities, and between different communities and cultural groups. We have a guest speaker in this debate, um, a different guest speaker, I think, in, in, in some ways, to speakers that we've been used to at the uh, Congress, uh, a youth trainer from uh, Greece, and we will also watch a, a video message on the situation of young people prepared by the Council of Europe's Director of Youth and Sport. So I really do have the uh, great pleasure of, uh, of, of welcoming Georgis uh, Georgidis, who is a youth trainer living in Thessaloniki. I hope I pronounced your name right, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure, but uh, you have been working in uh, local NGOs and since 2000 organised summer camps for uh, people with disabilities. You've also set up the NGO Kids in Action, organised activist actions in uh, Thessaloniki, worked with the Greek National Agency of Youth and you're con currently working and continuing that work. And you're a member of the committee of the, for the candidacy of, of your city for the European Youth Capital in, in 2014. Now, Mr. Georgios, you, in 2008, you yourself were a protester and, uh, and you demonstrated during the rights in uh, Athens with thousands and thousands of young people who spontaneously went out onto the streets. And according to your own words, you are, you're visiting us today to bring to our debate the honest scream of a young person, which you hear every single day in your country. So you really are very, very welcome to be with us. And the floor is yours, please. Hello. Hello, my friends, and thank you very much for this invitation. It's uh, truly an honor to be here with you and share my experience and my feelings. This is the first time that I'm talking to so formal audience, so please allow me this uh, stress that I have. It's true that I have been demonstrating during 2008 riots in Athens after a teenager dead shot by a policeman. I did the same for five days back in my home city, Thessaloniki. And ever since, I do the same every year. I demonstrate every December. I will never forget the first moments after the murder when thousands of young people, without any call, spontaneously went out to the street to demonstrate against 
police violence. The murder was just a cause. We went out to the streets to fight the injustice, the poverty, the unemployment, the corruption, the lack of democracy. Young people have never been the priority in the governmental agenda. We were always the most passive part of the society. The politicians are taking decisions for us without us. I've been traveling to come to Strasbourg to meet you via Germany. And I was really afraid to show my identity in German. Probably you know why. I'm 30 year, 32 years old and this was the first time in my life that I was ashamed to be Greek. Why? Why do I have to be ashamed that I'm Greek? I have been traveling a lot in the past year, even in different continents. And I was really proud to present myself that I'm coming from the land of Aristotle, Plato and Tomir. The land of democracy, the land of philosophy and theater. Things change, and now I'm coming from the land of corruption, the land of debt, a land without any future. I only have one question. Why do young people in Greece have to pay for the mistakes of the previous generation? The past 30 years in Greece, the two big political parties had the chance to make a stable society, had the chance to make a stable economy. And what they did instead, they gave the power to few. There is a Greek ancient word that describes the phenomenon, oligarchy. Something that really hurts me and I would like also to say it with you, is that every single moment a young boy or girl from Greece is leaving the country right now, searching for a better quality of life in another European countries or even to another continent. Greece is getting poorer every moment. In Greece right now, we don't have only economical crisis. I believe that it's something deeper. It's a crisis of values, a crisis of life. Young people protest for the basic rights, a right to have a place to live, a right to make a family, the right to work, the right to have a fair educational system, the right to participate to the decision-making process. I totally understand violence coming from young people, especially on the streets during the demonstrations. Young people lost everything during the last 10 years. There is nothing left to lose. When you take somebody's life, he will react. Violence results to violence. And we, young people in Greece, we are experienced in the state violence every single day, starting from schools, teaching us how important it is be, to be better, faster, and richer. And if things keep going as they go, so bad for my country, I believe that people will become more and more violent if we are not willing to create a fair society for the next generation, I'm afraid that violence, violence will not fade away. We need to find means, tools, methods to work with the new generation. We have to recover our humans, our sense of humanity, to work deep on democracy, to give the space and time to young people to take initiatives, to put theory into practice, to boost our educational systems, to work on solidarity, peace, non-violence, coexistence, unity, and tolerance. The most important reason to be here with you today is to share with you the, the thousands of voices of young people in Greece fighting for justice, fighting for life. If I may suggest you something to you, the local politicians, it will be only one word. Open. Open your offices and let the young people come inside. 
they have important things to share with you. Open the doors of the old abandoned buildings at your cities. Give them to the young people to dream, plan, initiate, even make mistakes. Open the rooms of your committees and invite them to sit next to you. Give them, give them the right to participate, the right to raise their voices. Open your eyes and see what is happening around you. Feel the evolution. Open your ears and hear the thousands of voices of young people asking for justice and dignity. Open your minds. Be tolerant. I know and I, I believe that you all know that the situation in Greece is getting worse. At this moment that I'm talking, thousands of people in the main squares of big cities, they demonstrate in, in Greece. These people, they have nothing to wait. Especially young people have no plans, no dreams, no vision, no hope. And if people lose hope, these things are getting seriously dangerous. At this crucial moment for my country, as a young Greek, I'm not asking for your sympathy, not even your economical support, although this is so important right now for my country, but I'm asking for your moral solidarity as nation to nation, as human being to human being. This country historically gave so many things to humanity without any reward. It's time for humanity to give back to Greece the support that it reserves. But a support based to human dignity and national independence. I just wrote this speech yesterday night. And this speech is not a speech of words, as it seems. It's a speech full of tears. Tears for my country. Thank you. Well, Georgos, thank you very much for that speech, which uh, came from the heart, I think, as opposed to always the head. Absolutely uh, uh, right in terms of the way in which we as politicians need to uh, engage with young people. That is something which is uh, very important to us. The European Local Democracy Week, which is something promoted by the Council of Europe, is very much about that engagement with, uh, with young people, to talk to young people. We do have a very good rapport with young people here in Strasbourg, uh, certainly. And, of course, you saw the, uh, the French young people uh, in, in the gallery uh, here listening to these proceedings. So we very much appreciate you uh, being with us here today. A different sort of speaker, but I think in terms of the, the Congress, absolutely right to see someone like yourself here with us and, uh, and sharing your thoughts and views on behalf of young people. So, sincerely do thank you very much for that. Okay. We're now going to, uh, I think, uh, move on to see a, a video message, uh, which is prepared by the Council of Europe Youth Sector. And uh, I think the technical elements are ready. Yeah? Okay, well, I think they're working on it, and um, it will start again, I think, with the sound, because that's what we want to hear is the voice of young people. <laughs> that's what is very important to us, that we hear the voice.
Colleagues, what I think we can do is um, I, I will open the debate and we will come back to the, uh, to the video if it's not ready. Is it ready? It's now running, but we don't have sound. I believe that we the local authorities could um, work more closely with young people and take them more seriously into the decision-making process. And um, I would like to see uh, the local authorities involving young people regardless of their political beliefs. Uh, I would like our local authorities to have no political color. They pay attention for the problems because we go to talk to them that we have problems, that they, they should help us to solve the problems. I think they, they try to tell us that we should be more creative because, yeah, because we live a very bad moment, we are in crisis and no money for everything. They supported us in that they, they pay for our organisation and they stand over whatever projects we run. They weren't very actively involved. And then, you know, from the Enter project and, and hearing about this local authority link and stuff, I tried to connect with local politicians and explain what our work was and, and if they could support us or even show an interest, but there's very little interest in. Most of the actions from the government, they go to big cities, big areas where most of people live. And sometimes small areas are often forgotten. Our local authorities know about the work we do and they clap us on the shoulder, say, good work. But at the same time, we tell them that other, more young people could do exactly the same work as we do. They want also to, to be organized, to be active, and this you have to support, whether you will um, provide uh, places where they could be, or provide uh, money where they could also do their own projects. Um, but this is also uh, a way for them, I mean, it's not very easy to, to let uh, go of some of the power they have. In this sentence that the same people that work with these authorities, they are the ones also that probably read about the young people in, in these and other neighbors, in the media, and in the media, we are also described as, as problems. So it's not easy for them to, to let go of the power they have because they don't trust that the work will be good. Well, we got it working uh, in the end and, and, and heard a message from, uh, from, from young people, um, which I think is very important for us to listen to as local and regional politicians, <clears throat> but also we need to uh, debate these issues uh, as well, which is why I'm now going to uh, open our debate this afternoon. Uh, and our first speaker is Mr John uh, Warmishan, please, from the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr President. Where to begin when discussing young people? I can remember how I got involved. I was 16 years old, working as an apprentice painter and decorator in the great city of Manchester, and I was asked to be the apprentice trade union rep, a shop steward. And from that day onward, that's how I, how I as a young person, found my voice through the trade union movement. But we see now that things aren't like that anymore. This is going back 30 odd years ago. What we're seeing now is people that Georges has spoken about, young Greek people crying out for help. And it's not just the young people of Greece. It can be echoed around the world. Young people want a voice, but they're being ignored. I think we've seen, as the President said at the start, the amount of riots, disturbances that have happened around the world that have involved young people, and young people are frustrated. I think what we saw in the UK was different from region to region. 
Some of it was just wanton criminality and looting and just being bad. I think there was badness there. But I think what we're seeing across Europe and around the world are young people just so, so frustrated. And I think that we, as local politicians, have got to give those young people a voice. I think, as the President said, European Local Democracy Week, this is a chance to actually engage with young people, to actually show young people what we as local politicians and as community leaders do. And what can we do for them? We have to listen to them, to actually give them a voice so that we can actually hear, because, you know, you can't get away from it. Young people need to be engaged. If you do not engage your young people, you are asking for trouble. Uh, and I, I, would, I would just beg Congress to actually, when you go back home, check with your member for children, member for youth, what is going on in your city? What can you do to assist and to aid and to encourage and to involve young people in any form of public life, in any form of, of engagement. You know, it, it's, it's very hard for this young generation at the moment. We're going through some of the most financial difficulties that we've ever been in for a number of years. And one of the things that always gets cut are services to young people. And I think it's, it's short-sighted, you know. I know it is very, very difficult and sometimes an easy target, but it is very, very difficult. It does concern me, however, that the media, the media have a big role to play. Too often, they demonise young people. Young people are not all bad, and not all they're causing trouble. You know, young people can have a big part to play in our society and in our communities, and we must encourage that. I will finish on, on this, President. I think one of the things that I always used to say when I was Chair of Education in Salford is ignore the voice of young people at your peril. I think we cannot afford to ignore young people's voice anymore because they are getting so frustrated. I think young, young people, Mr President, are our future and we must not ignore them. We must encourage them and nurture them and support them. So I'd ask that we as Congress actually work with our young people back home and hopefully one day they will replace us here and be involved across Europe. Thank you, Mr President. Thank you very much, John. And I think some of your own personal good practice in Salford of, uh, of working with young people has very much uh, come across there and you're right um, when it comes to budgetary matters it's a very easy target to cut and I'd always argue to resist that cut in, uh, in, in youth budgets uh, and the like I'd now like to uh, move on to our next uh, speaker Mr uh, Gilbert Roger if you please Mr Roger Monsieur le Président, mes chers collègues, President, uh, colleagues, on m'a demandé de, de faire une courte intervention. Uh, I was asked to make uh, a brief statement dernier, as part of this debate. Up until last Thursday, I was the mayor of a town of um, 50,000 people. We had riots in my town in 2005. Now, these riots took place over 11 days and 11 nights. And we had to work really hard um, to maintain a calm, at, to retain a calm atmosphere in the city, to um, avoid deaths or further injuries. So this is why I'm here today. Now, the problem which we have is that we often lived live or exist in closed spaces. We have 
districts which are cut off because of bad transport links. Our young people don't have access to good education. I'd like to present a comparison. If you look at Brittany, I have a friend who is an elected represent, uh, an elected representative there. And when you look at the number of people who finish um, A-levels who are educated up to the age of 18 and see the um, figures there, then you see a huge um, comparison. You see real injustices here when you look at different areas of France. Now, if you look at France, we are always trying to label people. We're always trying to look at their origins. We say that all people are equal in front of the law, but we're always very focused on where people come from, and this has consequences when it comes to finding a job. Now, we've heard from our the young man who has come from Greece, and he has told us that coming from Greece, he felt ashamed when he was traversing Germany. And we have to show the Greek people that we are interested in finding solutions to the current problems in Europe. And I think that in our next session, we should have a report on the policies of local authorities so that in Greece and other countries where the, where the IMF is intervening, how, that we, how can we as local authorities deal with this situation? Because these are going to be decisions which have to be taken in Greece, tomorrow Italy, and then probably in France. So we we need to see how we can find solutions to these problems, and this is an important contribution which the Council of Europe can make to generate reports like this to find solutions. Now, I was um, shocked when here in the hemicycle, the representative from Dexia came to talk to us and told us um, the good evaluation of the work of this bank, and now Dexia has been dismantled, and the, the big question is how are the member states going to pay the debts of this bank and the consequences which this has for the investments of local authorities. So it's important that we show solidarity to Greece. Merci beaucoup, Mr. Rogier. Um, prochain, uh, Mr. Sanchez and Moore, s'il vous plaît. Gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much, President. Now, there is a trivial dispute going on. We have some people from New York who think that everything began with their revolution and our Spanish colleagues would commemorate the 15th of May, but Georges has just reminded us that really, in political terms, important things all started back in Greece. Now, we need, though, to take into account some of the features of the Spanish movement, the so-called 15th of May movement or the so-called Spanish revolution, because because what happened was that on the 15th of May, various protests which started off amongst the students came to coincide with the trade union movement. And we also had uh, people on the internet who were fighting for copyright. And as I say, all of these elements came together. And that is why we commemorate the 15th of May as the beginning of this movement in my country. Now, it has been a very peaceful movement. There has only been one violent incident when Catalan MPs were prevented from reaching the parliament, but essentially people have assembled peacefully in the squares of our towns and cities. They, of course, have a political manifesto, a political program, which is a little bit difficult to grasp. It's difficult to get a handle on because these various political agendas vary. 
But what essentially they have in common is that people want more participatory democracy. They want to fight against the entrenched party political system in Spain. They're also concerned about economic problems and the political ramifications of economic problems. They want a more open and participatory political system, as I already said. But I think a very specific issue in Spain, of course, is unemployment and the problem that a lot of people um, have uh, difficulty paying off their mortgages and, of course, you know, all the usual issues as well, people wanting nuclear power plants to be shut down. So a whole range of different political demands. But essentially, I think they all go to show that there is a sense of unease, of discomfort with the political system in our countries. And that is why I think it should serve as a wake-up call to us as politicians. It's important that we, in the light of all of this, rethink the way we do things. I think, really, this is a civilizational issue, if you like, because in historical terms, we know this for a fact, it may well be possible that our children are not as well off as we are, because since the Second World War, I think every generation has been fairly sure that the next generation will enjoy higher political and economic living standards than the previous generation, whereas that is not the case now. So that is why young people have become more politicized. They're talking about political issues. They're talking about matters of public concern. I don't think that young people are only interested in consumption, and that is a very good thing. I think that youth activism gives the lie to that contention that they're only interested in consumerism. What we have is a system of representative democracy, but we cannot supplant that system with anything else. Certainly, historically, we know that that has never been possible. You cannot replace representative democracy. Of course, there are positive aspects to this development, but there are also certain worry, worrying aspects. We have to be critical, however. We can't simply you know, pat young people on the back and say, well, you're the future, get on with it, because I think that that would be to betray the critical faculties of these young people. We need, therefore, to engage with them in a critical fashion. We shouldn't be paternalistic. We shouldn't pretend that you know, they can do everything on their own simply because they embody the future. The young people in Europe today, and not so much the future as the present. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Sanchez and more. Our, our next uh, speaker on my list is uh, Mr. Devrim uh, Shukro, please. Uh, Mr. Shukro. Thank you, Mr. President, dear colleagues. I would like to thank to uh, Georgios for helping us to see the world of young activists in Greece closely. And I, re I really have benefited from his speech. On the other hand, there is no doubt that democracy, human rights, and the rule of, rule of no law cannot be sustainable when people do not feel safe and governments fail to create a sec secure environment for its citizens. Nothing can be solved through violence and use of force. Nothing can justify any type of violence in a functioning democracy where parliaments and other democratic activism and dialogue mechanisms are in place. Most likely, the most barbaric form of urban violence is scourge of terrorism, targeting innocent civilians and local inhabitants. Unfortunately, for almost three decades, my country has been witnessing this type of brutal violence, which is a crime against humanity. Only yesterday and today, 32 young people were killed and many others were injured in organized and planned attacks carried out by terrorist organization of PKK in southeast of Turkey. Yes, you haven't misheard. 32 young people 
lost their lives. Among them were also civilians, including a two-year-old child. These 32 young people were mothers, fathers, husbands, and wives. And after all, they were local residents, as other 8 million, 800 million Europeans. <clears throat> Respect to human rights and addressing the main causes of violence are equally important. In that regard, I would like to stress that Turkey, as a responsible founding member of this organization, has been conducted its fight against PKK terrorism in line with human rights and rule of law. Let us not forget the destructive and traumatic effects of terrorist attacks on the development of the local democracy, peace and order at local level in Turkey. I would like to invite you to feel for only one second the feeling of families and the country lost these 32 young innocent people while we were discussing on human rights and democracy in the Congress in last two days. They were young Turkish and European citizens living together in dignity. We expect the Congress to show solidarity with Turkey in these hard times and condemn the recent terrorist attacks. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, Mr. Mikhail uh, Tamilos from Greece. Dear colleagues, my name is Michalis Timanos, and I represent the Greek local authorities. We were indeed uh, quite touched to hear what the uh, young Greek friend had to say, and he's representing the Greek uh, youth. Uh, he's describing like what the different problems are they have to contend with. This doesn't, however, mean that we agree with everything uh, that, uh, that Mr. Doja just said. I can't agree with someone who's ashamed of his origins. We're proud to be Greeks, and we can say this very loud. And uh, of course, um, there have been uh, errors uh, made by political parties and so on and so forth, um, but we are very proud of our past and of being Greeks. The second point that was mentioned by another speaker is that we can't justify violence. Even if we feel that we're uh, shortchanged as such, if our illusions have been shat shattered, if our projects and dreams have been destroyed, this is no reason, though, to resort to violence and to uh, not respect a democratic procedures. You know, I was uh, lucky enough to belong to the 1970s generation when students uh, rebelled against the military junta of the colonel, which uh, lasted for quite some time in Greece. I remember I was at a uh, university at the time, and at the time we had a daily struggle to ensure that democracy was established in the country. And at the time, our claims and demands were, we want bread, we want education. And we want freedom. And we had these, we got these three things following our struggle. I think now the time has come for us to also be self critical. Democracy, with its parliamentary system, represents a true democracy. And as our friend Dodos was saying, does this, is this parliamentary democracy something that's turning into a form of oligarchy that is giving privileges to some and not to others? I think, therefore, the time has come in the context of the current crisis that we give proper thought to our current system. And this concerns all countries. Perhaps this is a message that most young people are trying to get across. Our representative democratic systems uh, uh, perhaps will enable us, we hope, to meet the concerns uh, of the youth today. 
and uh, young people feel today that other people are taking decisions in their stead without even consulting with them. And I have a message for our friend uh, George and others, uh, not just from my country, but also from the whole continent, to uh, the following message. The local authorities are on your side. We're investing in the future of young people. And uh, I hope that this uh, current uh, disenchantment or disappointment and this uh, palpable tension that we can fill in our country will be temporary only. I do hope that young people will be able to provide solutions to the crisis our country is undergoing. And of course, young people should stay in Greece. They shouldn't leave Greece. Uh, they need to work very hard to ensure that dignity is restored. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I mean, I suppose many of us in our youth have, uh, have been uh, rebels. Um, I mean, I was a rebel in my youth. I, I was involved in the 1970s uh, uh, Stop the South African Cricket Team uh, tour uh, in a protest against uh, apartheid in South Africa. So many of us had those, uh, th 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 those rebel roots uh, in our youth and uh, absolutely right that we see those through into our uh, uh, political uh, processes and our political careers. And uh, I'd now like to uh, move on to our next uh, speaker, Mr. Emilio Varengia, please, Mr. Varengia. The floor is yours. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, President. This afternoon's debate is an important one, more topical than ever before. And I think that was attested to by our young Greek friend. He has given us an indication of the various events which are taking place. And as the President of Congress said in his introduction, various events taking place in different European capitals give us a sense of the link between the local community and young people. Just a few days ago, I'm sorry to say that in Rome, which is of course our capital city, we witnessed a violent event. There was a wave of destruction and devastation, an unjustified violent attack on the police. Violent young people became embroiled in a peaceful protest and went on the rampage, wreaking violence throughout the city of Rome. So that is why this is such an important issue, and it is one which is at the heart of local authorities' concerns. Concerns. Local authorities, of course, are supposed to be the closest level of government to young people, but they shouldn't be viewed as the enemy, and certainly they shouldn't be viewed as a legitimate target of violence. And that is why, through the best practice that this Congress has advocated, and we were talking about just that this very morning in the Chamber of Local Authorities, we were debating the European week of local democracy. And what we need to do is open up the doors of our institutions to young people. Although I have to say that in Italy, we launched a whole host of different initiatives some considerable time ago. And we have many local authorities, provinces and regions which have specific delegations for youth policy. We also have youth advisors. We have young people we have people who act as mediators when young people interact with our democratic structures. So we do have an interface between our democratic structures and young people, as I say. But what we are facing right now 
is a pretty ugly crisis. We have problems with families, with education, uh, and with parishes as well in Italy. And all of these institutions find it difficult to deal with young people. I take the view, however, that young people shouldn't only follow the kind of bad examples they see on the internet, rather, they should look at the kind of economic difficulties countries are facing right now. I mean, it's quite true to say that Greece is experiencing a particularly acute crisis at the present time. But you can't only blame its administrators. I mean, you've got bankers as well. We have various initiatives by banks even to try and restore stability in the country. So I think we shouldn't uh, be fanning the flames. Uh, rather, we should be showing our solidarity here in this Congress. We should show solidarity with our forces of law and order because many hundreds of police in Italy were subject to violence in recent days. And that is why we must continue to show our support for institutions. But institutions, having said that, can change, and they have to adapt to certain phenomena, such as globalization. It's important, however, that we rise to such challenges democratically. But what we have here is an exchange of views, visions, and ideas. And most importantly, we need to make young people aware of the kinds of difficulties that local authorities are facing, particularly in the kind of market which no longer obeys any rules. I firmly believe, therefore, that our Congress should point the way ahead. We need to have young people reason in a democracy. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, our, our next speaker on the list uh, is uh, Mrs. Uh, Romanova, please. Mrs. Romanova. Thank you, President. I was very concerned when I heard the statement from our young colleague. I think he communicated the pain which young people in many countries are feeling at the moment because the crisis is affecting all countries in Europe and young people are suffering most of all. They are the group of the population who affected most of all, they are really facing the real brunt. Now, just two days before I came here, I saw um, pictures on the news in Ukraine. There was a demonstration in Kiev involving young people and they were demonstrating against the mortgages um, in Ukraine, which are completely inaccessible to them. They want to be able to live. They want to be able to love. They want to be able to have children. Children and young people are our future. If we can't offer anything to our young people today, then we can't be sure of our own future. Of course, today we need to say to our young people that those who understand their prospects, we can go hand in hand together. We know we are living in difficult times and we cannot um, just stand there and look at ourselves in the mirror and say, well, what wonderful policies we're putting together. Politicians have a responsibility. We have to respond to the situation. We understand that we have to offer 
hope to young people. Now, I'd like to present a good example. Yesterday, we were talking about violence. Recently, in Ukraine, we had a, we organized a film festival, and as part of this festival, young people presented many good examples of how to combat violence, and I think this is a really good example of ways in which we can work to counter the challenges which we are all confronting at the moment. We are talking openly, openly here. We as locally and regionally elected representatives, maybe we should be ashamed of the fact that sometimes we aren't um, able to react adequately to deal with the concerns of young people. Um, today we've got a exhibition opening um, on the city of Ivanova as part of the contest for the youth capital of Europe. And we need to really think about how we can respond to the proposals of youth, their positive um, proposals. And I'd like to appeal to our Greek colleague. I'd like to speak to all um, young people. We have the brains, we have the youth, but we have a common problem. This is the crisis. We don't need to shy away from this. We need to make proposals in each of our different member states. It's a difficult situation in Greece. It's a difficult situation in Ukraine. It's difficult for many of the countries represented here today. But we need to group together. We need to work together. And if we do this, we will be successful. We will win. So thank you very much. And I would support any report on this issue. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia, for, for that contribution. Um, Mr. Uh, Testu, please. Just now, our Turkish friend was talking to us about terrorism uh, concerning the PKK. Can I say here that we uh, condemn all forms of uh, violence and terrorism, of course, as well? But let's not forget that in Turkey there are Kurds that are in favor of democracy, and these uh, Kurds have been elected democratically, and there are almost 1,000 to 2,000 Kurds who are in prison, including one of whom is a member of our Congress, uh, without any charges having been uh, leveled at them. So how can you say or expect that Turkey to be in a position to resolve the Kurdish situation if it doesn't extend its uh, hand to the Kurds to develop a dialogue with them because the Kurds are in favor of democracy. Let's not forget the countries such as Ireland and Spain and France as well had to contend with the similar issues. There were minorities who quite clearly wanted to be represented. Look at the Basque country, for instance. Spain was intransigent over terrorism, but did, however, initiate dialogue with the Basque representatives and uh, listen to what they had to say and what's the situation now where this problem is finally being solved once and for all, as with Ireland, as we had in our country in France as well. And if Turkey wants to solve the Kurdish uh, issue, the Kurdy needs, Turkey needs to initiate dialogue with the Kurds to are in favor of democracy. Of course, uh, uh, the uh, Turkey will make sure that those that are in favor of terrorism will be isolated. But what I would like to say to the Turkish delegation representative here is that uh, you should defend as forcefully as possible all representatives, all Kurdish elected representatives who have been unjustly imprisoned. So far as the panel of young people is concerned that I've seen, I'm not quite sure how it was set up, but to, to say that local authorities are deaf, are dumb uh, with regard to young people's uh, demands is something that surprises me greatly because in France the local authorities for several years have made great efforts to listen to young people. We have uh, come a long way and we do help them. Of course, there are unemployment problems. There are other issues as well which mean that the future may not seem all that rosy or bright, but we have to work on this subject. But I don't think, having said that, uh, we should start uh, trotting out uh, cliches. Of course, the situation is different from one country to the next. The second point I want to make is I was listening to our Greek friend earlier, and I was very uh, shocked to hear that he said he was ashamed to be Greek, and that on Saturday he was going to protest against the police. And this is something that really shocks 
shocks me because there's no need to be ashamed of being Greek. Uh, Greece is the cradle of our democracy. It's a country that has a great value so far as we're concerned, and there's uh, every reason to be proud to be Greek. Of course, Greece is undergoing a crisis at the moment, a very serious crisis indeed. But Greece is being supported by several countries, and I'm, I feel sure that we will all unite together to ensure that solutions can be found to overcome these difficulties. What this means is that our session should come up with uh, working parties to go into more detail in this, to not uh, come out with cliches and to ensure that uh, proper proposals are made for young people. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much indeed, Mr Testu. I uh, now come to our, our final speaker uh, uh, on my list, uh, which is uh, Mr Moore, please. The floor is yours. Uh, Herr, Herr, Präsid, Herr Präsident. President. Geschätzte, Herr Präsident, Geschätzte, President. Ich möchte zur Jugenddiskussion Distinguished members of the Congress, leisten, wie man I would like to make a contribution to this youth debate and explore the way in which we can tackle problems and find solutions. I'm from a small country, Austria, and I'm from a small province there, and the head of our province said that young people are a challenge for our society. There shouldn't be a single young person in this country who lacks hope in the future. All young people should either have a job or a training opportunity, such as an apprenticeship, and he made an appeal to former teaching staff, to former company executives, uh, mayors, councillors. He called on everyone concerned to see to it that all young people have some kind of a training opportunity, a place in education or an apprenticeship. Now, a lot of people took him up on that appeal and this was very successful. He was the mayor of uh, a local authority for 25 years. And what I do now, in actual fact, in my free time, is work as a youth worker, if you can believe that. I have a list of young people with 50 names on it that I received a year and a half ago, and I have various contacts with companies and company bosses. And having talked to these companies, I've managed to find births for 30 of them in various companies, and being able to find them a job is a really good thing. That's when I've had a really good day. Not a bad point to end on, I think, find them a job. I think that is something which is uh, pretty uh, pertinent to uh, our uh, debate. Um, we've run out of time, so if there are any further members who wish to contribute, then uh, certainly you are able to hand in your uh, written contribution to room uh, 1081 and you are able then to have that produced within the uh, summary record. So anyone who hasn't been called, who did wish to speak, please go to room 1A1 and that contribution will be included uh, within, the, uh, within the text. Um, what I would like to uh, now uh, do um, is perhaps to give the last word again to a young person. I think we've had a very good debate. I think you've heard uh, some, some, some interesting views from politicians, uh, Georgos, and uh, perhaps you'd just like to uh, say something uh, in response. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it happened also yesterday to a meeting that I had. Just to clarify that during my speech, I said, I do understand violence. I didn't say that I accept violence. It's something really important to clarify. And because um, and violence is out of my daily life and my philosophy in general. And I also, during my speech, I suggest that if we really want to create a fair society, we have to base the society on violence and peace and solidarity. This just to be clarified. And 
But I would like to ask all these people here what happening when we have global violence from big countries, when big countries organize even wars in the name of freedom. This is also a kind of type of violence. And can I, can I speak Greek? Yes. Θα ήθελα να απαντήσω γενικότερα και στο φίλο μου το Γάλλο αλλά και στον Έλληνα. I would like to also respond to the delegate from France and also the Greek delegate when they referred to the fact that I'd said that I wasn't proud of my Greek origins. It's not about being ashamed of my origins. Maybe I've shocked some of the participants, but what's important here is dignity. Now, you might not believe me, but this feeling of shame is something which is shared by a lot of young people. They've lost their dignity, maybe they've lost their homes, and they are not able to respond to certain fundamental needs which they have. And that's what I was trying to express, that I feel ill at ease being Greek, and this is a feeling which I've had for some time now. And so I think that the problem here is that it's the integrity of the whole nation which has been shaken here. I think this is important for each country, um, the idea of national integrity, a feeling of sovereignty, and I think if you lose this, this feeling of shame is a natural follow-on from this. Well, thank you very much indeed for, for, for that sort of final uh, comment, Gorgi. And I mean, I know it's a pretty brave thing to do to uh, actually come here to uh, a great big assembly of, of this. And uh, I think you've put forward those views on behalf of young people very, very well uh, indeed. And, and certainly the issue of engagement with young people uh, is something which uh, we do take very, very seriously indeed uh, as local and regional politicians uh, across the, uh, the whole of, uh, of Europe. What I would say is that I think there's been a very important debate here this afternoon. This is something which I think the Bureau does need to uh, consider on, on how we do take this uh, work forward. It's, it's not just something that we've had a good debate on and that's the end of it. This must be something which is the start of a, uh, of a process and also to continue what a lot of mayors are doing in their own towns of engaging with young people, exchanging good practice, involving young people in the um, political uh, process. So certainly the Bureau will uh, look at uh, uh, that. I mean, I was a pretty young person when I first started in politics. I mean, I was 23 when uh, I was elected, so you're a little bit older than I am when I started. Maybe you should think about actually uh, studying for election yourself and, uh, you know, putting, uh, putting that view forward. But very much appreciate you being here. Something refreshing, I think, for us members and uh, good to see you. And I hope we might be able to come back to you, Gorgi, to uh, just when we've had some further consideration, see what you think. So thanks a lot. Well, I've turned myself off. <laughs> We're now um, certainly going to uh, move on to a